My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. Today's video sponsor is GGG Mall. We're using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I should Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So yesterday AMD revealed the new RDNA 3 card, so the RX 7000 series, with a new RX 7900 XTX, yes you heard it right, XTX, like 15 years ago where AMD was actually punching NVIDIA in the nutsack, and the 7900 XT. And the biggest, and the the biggest thing about the, the, this new event and what actually made AMD one, yes, because AMD one was the price. Well, Nvidia just ramped up the prices crazy, crazy to sixteen hundred dollars for the forty ninety and twelve hundred dollars to the forty eighty sixteen gigabytes. AMD actually maintained the prices with nine hundred and ninety nine dollars for the XTX version and eight hundred and ninety nine dollars for the XT version. And well, we can actually argue that the XT version is the non-XT version of the XT version that is called now XTX. That's not the case because if we look at compute units, for example, the 6950 XT has 80 compute units, while the 7900 XT has 84 compute units and the 7900 XTX has 96 compute units, if I'm not mistaken. So. If we take compute units in consideration, well, the 7900 XT is actually the, the successor of the, the 6950 XT or the 6900 XT. So if we take that in consideration with all the inflation and so on, AMD actually reduced the price in terms of physical units, which is amazing. And they can maintain and lower the prices because they're now using chiplet design like on the Ryzen CPUs. For example, the, the previous CPUs were using monolithic dies, just a big die. Well, while the Ryzen CPUs, for example, use several dies. They have one die for the cores, one die for the input and output and so on. That's how they work. And usually the input and output use um, a, more, a cheaper die in order to save money because the input and output doesn't really need the top tier die. And the same applies now to the Ryzen 7000 series GPUs, at least for the top tier ones like the ones that were presented. Now they're using chiplet design, using 6 nanometers for the memory cache and 5 nanometers for the rest of the GPU. So they are basically using the more matured and cheaper dies for the memory cache, being able to save money, lots of money actually, and using the fastest 5 nanometers dies where it actually matters, so on the rest of the GPU. And this not only saves production costs because if you're using smaller dies it means that the rate of failure is also way smaller so they can uh, gain money in the production and making the GPU itself is also less expensive so it's a win-win situation and that's why they can actually maintain or lower the prices taking in consideration inflation and so on uh, while actually still having a higher profit margin. That's what I believe. And in terms of price alone, AMD is killing it with $600 less than the 1490, but in terms of performance, what do we have in terms of performance? Well, in terms of performance, they claim up to 1.7 times the performance increase, so basically 70% performance increase, uh, which is not bad because on average, in terms of rasterization, which is what they're showing, the RTX 1490 was on average 60% faster than the 3090 Ti, and now we have the 7900 XTX being around 60% faster as well in rasterization than the 7950 XT. And if we look at previous charts, the 7950 XT was actually already faster than the 3090 Ti in some games. So it means that if we have the same percentage of uplift in terms of rasterization and the 7950 XT was already faster than the 3090 Ti, it means that in terms of rasterization, well, the the, 16, the 7900 XTX should in theory be faster or at least equal to the 1490 once again in terms of rasterization with a possible loss of uh, up to 30% in terms of ray tracing since AMD increased up to 
percent performance per computer unit on the new rdna3 generation okay up to 50 percent per compute unit but since the new generation actually actually has more compute units than the previous one once again the 7900 xtx has 96 computer units compared to the 80 computer units on the 6950 xt it means that we can actually have more than a 50 percent uplift in terms of ray tracing performance because well, simple maths, more computer units, if we have 50 up to 50% increase per computer unit and we have more computer units, it means that we have more up to more than 50% increase. Once again, simple math. And on top of that, we have way lower power draw. So around 95 watts lower power draw compared to the RTX 4090. So 355 watts on the 6900 XTX versus the 450 watts on the RTX 4090 and 300 watts on the 7900 XT, which is just insane. Insane. If you, if you actually go to the performance in terms of rasterization, more physical units, more VRAM, everything more actually, and the power draw keeps the same. Actually, compared to the 6950 XT, we have a difference of just 20 watts. So 20 watts more and way less than the 4090. But then there's always that fanboy on top of that saying, well, but what about the LSS3? I won't buy any AMD GPU because drivers and well, the LSS3 is the future. If you really want the LSS3, AMD just announced FSR3 as well. And once again, they have all those fake, fake slash predicted frames technology that they call fluid motion like on the TVs. So they have the same technology. They'll present the same technology uh, of the, the LSS3 in 2023. Uh, also with that that thing, that fluid motion thing. So, so you'll have everything that you have on the NVIDIA side, but for $600 less and lower power draw. It's a win-win situation. AMD just won. And I, I guarantee you that in a few weeks, we'll see the 4090 and the 4080 having huge price drops, huge. And if you're watching up to this part and you're already calling me fanboy, no. If you don't actually admit that AMD won the game, that AMD won and consumers won, I'm not a fanboy. You're the fanboy. Because as soon as AMD actually presented the product costing $600 less, everyone in the gaming community just won. <laughs> AMD presented a very good product for way less than the competition, making the competition go for the price war as well, if they actually want to sell GPUs. Price performance, AMD just did what I wasn't even expecting because I was expecting AMD to actually push $1,200, $1,300 and be greedy and actually try um, to, to just get a bit more of what they could, a bit more of profit, but no, they actually aimed for the market share and they undercut Nvidia by $600 while delivering an amazing product. Insane. And that's not even a cherry on the top of the cake because according to Tech Power Up, well, uh, based on the details from PC World live streams, they say, following AMD's launch on the Radeon 7000 series, it was revealed that AMD has designed the Navi 31 GPU to be able to scale as high as 3 GHz. So uh, it seems that the, the rumors weren't actually uh, debunked so far, they are actually being... They are, they, they are actually claiming that uh, the rumors might be true, okay? In other words, it appears that AMD has power limited its cards, as usual, at least for the SKUs that, were, that the company has announced so far. This could be for many reasons, but most likely to try to find a balance in between power and performance. And this is obvious. The point here is that the, the new GPUs are actually clocked lower than the previous RX 6000 series. While, while we have, for example, the 6950 XT at around 2.5 GHz, we have the 7900 XTX at 2.3 GHz and the 7900 XT at 2 GHz, meaning that obviously we will be able to overclock them at least like 300-400 MHz. I believe that 300 MHz will be doable and in cards such as these ones with a big amount of computer units it will make a huge difference by overclocking 300 megahertz i do believe firmly that we'll have more than 10 percent performance increase 
with the with the overclocking on these GPUs, um, maybe with 100 watts power uh, on top of that. So 450 watts for over 10% performance increase seems completely fine to me. And well guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video, leave your comment in the comment section because that is really important for me, and well, see you in the next video, which will be really interesting. Now finally, a new GPU or CPU comparison. See you.